Welcome to Bashamania in 2020. Oh, what a year it's going to be. Who doesn't love the Olympic year? Now, given that it's a new year and we're 27 episodes into the podcast now, I had to bring on a guest that I think everybody's going to love. First of all, anybody who's a two-time national champion has a story that everybody wants to hear. But what I really love and admire about Vincenzo is he has such a lighthearted approach to wrestling. He doesn't take it too seriously, but he's uber committed. It doesn't get more committed and there's no more diligence than the level of wrestling D1. And I think he's kind of mastered that art of taking it serious and committing to doing everything you can to get better while having fun and loving what you do. So I'm excited to dive into this conversation. Before we do, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. This is the 27th incredible guest that's been on the show, and there's at least 27 more. So be sure to subscribe and come back for more episodes. But for right now, let's dive into the reason you're here, and that is two-time NCAA champion and 2020 Olympic Hopeful Vincenzo Joseph. It's Bashomania! Let me tell you something, brother. He gave us everything he had in him tonight. What you gonna do when Bashomania runs wild? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. And business just picked up here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chenzo, how are you? Good. Doing great. How are you? I'm pumped to have this conversation, and I feel like I say that a lot, but everybody I have on this podcast has such a good story. And as I watch a lot of the collegiate wrestlers, especially especially like some of you Penn State guys, you have such interesting personalities. Like I can tell you right now, I've been laughing for at least a year over when you posted that photo last year of the inside trip and you basically throw yourself against Marinelli and you post that photo and you're like, guys, if you want camp requests, give me a call. <laughs> like, like, yes. It takes a, that was a good one. Oh, I, I loved it. Like I laugh about it randomly. And I'm like, that's, that's the kind of personality this sport needs. Cause you have so many like tough guys. Like you have so many guys that are like hard. It's just like, yeah, man, I'm the best. I'm coming for you. Like, but you you are one of those guys I love being a fan of because you, you keep things so light. Just like your tweet a couple of weeks ago. I, I forgot what duel it was. You posted the video of <laughs> you weren't out for your match after the break. Nobody's on the bench. And you're like, I love the support of my team. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when your first match back from the half, everyone just kind of takes her time in the locker room and stuff so no one's ever there whenever i'm wrestling so it's pretty comforting (laughs) right so before we kind of talk about the current you know state of your career let's go back a little bit tell me how you got started in wrestling back you know way back when all right so um i was a little kid and uh i have an older brother he's uh about a year and a half or so older than me a little less and um I was in kindergarten, he was in first grade, and we went to a private Catholic school growing up, you know, all throughout, you know, like elementary school, high school, everything. And uh, one of the local public schools was coming around because they had a wrestling program and it was kind of like, you know, teetering between like uh, thriving and like, you know, going down in like the wrong direction, just losing guys. And then, you know, kind of like a dying sport. So I, uh, they came in and they were just going to like local private schools that, you know, obviously didn't have wrestling programs. And they're like, hey, like, you know, you guys come wrestle for, you know, our program here. You know, it's a cool sport, blah, blah, blah. So they went to my brother's class because they were, my brother's class was the youngest class that they went to. And I was a year below. So they didn't come to, like, the kindergarten kids. So my brother got it, like, took the flyer home. And he, like, goes to my parents, like, hey, I want to wrestle. So naturally, I just did it with them because I was his younger brother. Right. So that's how I started wrestling. And then... My older brother, he wrestled for a couple of years and didn't really like it. I just kind of stuck with it. And here I am. And, you know, you have such a good youth and high school career. You know, Penn State is such a, or sorry, Pennsylvania, like the state of Pennsylvania is such a incredible place to wrestle. 
and you had success at that young age. Did you know and were you good like really early on? And when did you start realizing you were pretty good? Um, so I, when I was like a little, little kid, I wasn't great. Obviously, you know, I got better. Like as I got older, yeah. um, I actually wasn't really even planning on wrestling in college till I was like a junior. Really? Yeah. So like, I was like thinking about it and I was like, I don't know how long I want to do this. And then something just kind of happened. Like going into my junior year, just got older and more mature. And I just really started to love wrestling a lot more and just decided it was what I wanted to do. And was Penn State the only school in contention or were there multiple schools that you considered going to? Um, you know, there were definitely multiple places I looked at. You know, there was you know, a lot of great uh, programs out there, a lot of really good coaches and stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, when it came down to it, I just uh, knew I fit in the best at Penn State. And, you know, it was really – it was pretty easy of a choice for me. And, you know – it's interesting that you mentioned you didn't know if you wanted to keep wrestling because I feel like so many people have such a great story of success later on. Like you hear the stories of people who have success really early on and they just kind of keep leveling up. But I love the stories where people don't really I don't want to say they don't commit because obviously you committed to wrestling so early on. But you hear the stories of people who really take it to the next level at the end of high school, you know, like Kassar, like he didn't go to the state tournament until senior year, wins it, and he continues right. to level up. Like, how did you continue to level up early on? Like, let's say through youth and high school, how did you continue to level up and get better, especially if you weren't dead set on wrestling in college? Um, so, I mean, there was a, definitely a lot of things that went into it. I mean, one was just, you know, so I don't get my butt kicked at practice. Right. Because... <laughs> I would wrestle with awesome guys all the time. Like me and, you know, me and Jason Knowles have been practice partners since we were like eight years old. Same with guys like Michael Kemmerer, Josh Shields. Yep. You know, a lot of those Franklin kids that, you know, were pit bull with Sonny whenever we were little kids and then young guns whenever we got older. And, you know, I, just, I remember wrestling with Spencer Lee all the time. We were the same size at one point and me and him worked out together That's all nuts. the time. So <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah. It was like, I think going into my freshman year around that time, maybe my freshman year, we were both around like 105 pounds. Wow. <laughs> and yeah. when do you hit a growth spurt? <laughs> yeah, I, I got a little bigger. <laughs> but um, I would say, so towards the end of my sophomore year of high school, I actually was not on my team and not wrestling. Like I was kind of like a combination of me getting booted from my team and just me quitting and being done too. Because I was uh, trying to get down to, I think it was 113, and I was like I couldn't make my descension weight going down. Yeah, and I just wanted to keep wrestling 120. So my coaches are pretty much just like you have to make a decision on what you want to do. So I just like all right, I'm done. Like I'm not making 113. So then I was out, <clears throat> didn't like talk to any of my coaches or anything like that. Like a week went by, and I was like I'm done wrestling like forever. <laughs> and then. Finally, like, my dad talked me into it. I came back, uh, that, and that was right before States, too. So I came back right for sections. Then I came in, like, third at States that year, and I was like, all right, like, you know, I think I'll probably just keep doing this, like, keep wrestling. Yeah. And then ended up going to Fargo and stuff that year. And how, when you thought about maybe giving up, or you thought about different things, like, you know, not necessarily giving up, but if you don't get down to weight you want, like, you have so many different levels of adversity in the sport, what was your kind of secret or your answer to overcoming that adversity and just keep going? Um, well, you know, so for that year, like, in that particular case, I just stayed up at, I was wrestling 120 pounds. Yeah. I just ended up staying up and uh, my coaches were okay with it. But, you know, there's just, like, I've battled, you know, I've had a really hard time, like, my entire life cutting weight. I've never really not cut weight, if that makes sense. Right, Like, yeah. I've been doing it forever. Yep. And it's just, like, you know, what, what you were saying about before, like, uh, you know, I'm kind of, like, an easygoing guy, and it's, like, yep. the post, like, tough guys in the sport. And, Honestly, I think a lot of the toughest guys in this sport are the guys that, you know, really don't talk about it. Right. You know, they just kind of keep quiet. And, you know, uh, when it comes to, you know, keeping your weight down, stuff like that, there's a certain toughness that goes along with it that I've, you know, 
I've been I've been figuring it out over the years. It's it doesn't come easy ever, but right. you just gotta uh, be at peace with it and know that if you're doing it, you gotta be all in. And when did you? You know, obviously we we kind of talked about how you do keep things relaxed and you do have fun. And I mean, I've been in the Penn State room like countless times, and you know, I, right. there, there's nothing like the atmosphere in there. Whether it's dodgeball and the competitiveness or the like, the fun nature of it, like there there is such a relaxed like have fun. Was that always your style growing up, or was that something that happened once you got to Penn State? So. um no, that definitely was not my style growing up. I was kind of just like uh You were a tough you know, guy. Like grind hard. <laughs> yeah, right. I was. I, I really was. I didn't really like, you know, maybe like act like it or talk like it, whatever. But but, but I was, you know, I, right. I would work out constantly. You know, I would just be trying to get after guys and wrestling hard. And it's just, um, I mean, you know, I still wrestle hard. Um, but just like that. I don't really know how to describe it. I guess like that tough guy thing, it just gets tiring. Yep. You know, doing that all the time without just kind of like letting loose and just like, you know, like really like enjoying it. Cause I feel like that's when you make your best games whenever you're really, you know, enjoying what you're doing. Totally. I think there's a lot to be said about that in both life in general and in sports and business and everything. Like enjoying it is so important. I mean, I can speak from, running a marketing company for 12 years like when there's clients that i don't enjoy it's just not fun and i can see the parallels with with sports and especially wrestling and i'm curious of you know how does that come into play with dealing with wins and losses like you've won incredibly big matches people didn't think you were going to win and you've lost matches people thought you were a lock to win like how do you balance the wins and losses and highs and lows like wrestling such a brutal sport it, it kind of, it has such a way of humbling you and being like real with you. And, you know, if you have fun, how do you, how do you manage those highs and lows? Does it make it easier or does it kind of get like, okay, maybe I got to get more, I don't want to say get more serious now because you, you kind of couldn't be more serious with the commitment, but how do you balance those highs and lows and wins and losses? And is, is it having that kind of let's have fun mentality? Well, um, you know, losing, Losing isn't fun. No one really ever enjoys that. And, you know, I've lost matches, you know, that I will, you know, think about forever. Right. And it just kind of, at the end of the day, it just kind of sucks. But really, you know, after after a loss, say like, you know, a Nationals last year, lost yep. the finals match. You know, like it kind of took me a little bit to get back in the room. But, you know, once I came back, it just like, it felt good to be there. I was like, I was back at home. And... You know, just kind of back to the drawing board because I know I can get so much better. Yep. And that's just the way I've been looking at it. Like, ever since then, like, I just, I know how much better I can be now. And just, I have so much to work on. And for me, like, that's enjoyable for me, knowing that I can progress. And I feel like so many people get stuck in that stage you were in where it's like, okay, I lost a match I shouldn't have lost in the finals to become a three-time NCAA champion. Like, that's a hard pill for anybody to swallow. And I feel like especially early on, if you're not headstrong and you don't have, whether it's a support system, whether it's habit, whatever it is that gets you back into the room after X amount of time, you kind of get stuck there and you have pity parties and everything else. What was it that got you back in the room? Like, how do you move past that loss where so many people get hung up on the adversity? So many people get hung up and they start, you know, maybe I should go to a different school. Maybe I shouldn't wrestle. Maybe this, that, whatever. How did you kind of work yourself through that mentally to to not give up and to just get back in the room, work harder, and know, you know, you can control the outcome the next time? Yeah, so... Um, I took some time off. Um, like I said, you know, my, my head wasn't in the best place and I was just, I remember coming back because I told myself, all right, like, I'm going to take two weeks and I'm going to come back. Yep. So I took my two weeks, came back on the first day and I was, I go to a wrestle my first day and it just like mentally and like emotionally, I was still hurt. Like I was just yeah. hurting and I just, I was like, man, like, I don't know if I'm ready for this or not. So then after that day, I went home and I stayed home for like a couple of days, didn't go back. And then honestly, what happened, this is kind of crazy. I was like just sitting at home 
And I was just like, man, like I am bored right now. <laughs> like I had nothing to do. Like I was like, yeah. I am bored. Like I should probably, I might as well go get a workout in. Right. So then I just, I guess the thing that helped me is that I just wasn't really thinking about it. Yeah. And then I went into practice and like, you know, I'm still thinking of all this stuff though at this time once I'm coming back into the room. But like, I'm just reassuring myself that, you know, I, I know that I, you know, that's over with now. And like, it's time like to move forward pretty much. So like, it took me, it took me two attempts to do it, but second attempt, I was good to go. Like, I was yeah, like, and, and still this, suck. It, and, you know, just knowing that I can work on stuff and just get better and get with, ready for next year. Right. And within wrestling, there's such a level of self-awareness that's needed both after a, after a you know a huge win and a huge loss, you, you have to kind of refocus. What was the difference between your perspective after you know, let's say beating Imar, winning a national championship, and then losing last year? Like, what's the focus? Like, what's the contrast and the focus after that? Because I know a lot of people have. I don't want to say they have a problem with winning because everybody wants to win. But sometimes when you're winning, 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 like I remember Bo was telling me when he was in the podcast, like you know, losing to miles kind of reset my focus. And sometimes you learn so much more from the losses than you do the wins. Like what was the difference like in your approach after you win NCAAs versus losing the finals? So I'd say in the long run, you know, like where I'm at right now, if I would have won that match last year, I don't think I would be nearly on the same, you know, path that I am right now. Yeah, like I've kind of changed a lot of, the way I do things a lot with pretty much everything, you know, just like how like my, just my daily routines and all that stuff, just different, yeah. you know, diet, everything, just a little different, nothing crazy, but you know, I just feel like I'm a lot more focused and like, I just like one, like, I don't know. I just want to be better more now. Like I just like always want to get better. It's not like, so I can go beat so-and-so, but it's just like, for me personally, I just always want to, you know, fine tune things and be the best that I can. But, you know, it's funny you say that though. Cause like after I lost, like I said, I had a hard time going back to practice, Yep. but then like, after like a big win, I'm ready to go practice the next day. Like I'm like, really? ready to go. like, yeah, after like a win like that, I'm like, I just like want to, you know, I feel like I'm on a roll. So keep, you know, might as well keep it going. But, you know, um, big wins like that though. I still like, I'm always, I'm a guy that like I always need to be getting better. I always like you know see like something or whatever, and I'm like I need to work on this because you know if so you brought up Bo, I go wrestle a guy like Bo at practice afterwards. I'm like man, I need to work on this, 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 and this. Right. You know, you know we have so many guys in there that are so good at a lot of things that I can always get better. And when you, you know, so does it. Because I've I've talked to so many people, and not even just wrestling, like soccer players, like Carly Lord, and different people, in different sports, where they say that one of the dangerous things about Olympic sports is when you win, or after that big high, you know, whether it's loneliness or trying to regain that same level of attention, not even just like public attention, but you know, like winning the NCAA's. I've talked to some kids who they win it, and they're like oh, that's it? You know, like, after a couple weeks, you kind of register the win, you're an NCAA champion, and now, like you said, you want to get better. You want to move on to the next thing. After you won your yeah. first NCAA championship, was there a desire to go and win another, or did your focus immediately shift towards, okay, I won an NCAA championship, now I want to win World and Olympic championship? Uh, um, definitely both. Um, I... I figured I wasn't, you know, ready for the uh, international stuff at that, you know, at that point. I mean, I was there. Right. You know, I uh, I didn't, really didn't wrestle any freestyle over the past few years. I just got back into it this year. And, uh, you know, just like the mindset, it's, it's like, for me, it's not like winning another one. You know, like I just try to take every year, you know, individually. Like I, like I was the national champion, whatever, 2017. You know, let's, you know, let's try to win it, you know, 2018, like, you know, I, I didn't win the 2018, but right. you know what I mean, though? 
Yep. Yeah, it's like it's a new year, you know, kind of like reset. It's like, like forever, like you know, forever, I'll be the 2017 national champ, but it doesn't matter in 2018 or 2019, whatever. Like, or no, I didn't. Whatever. Um, sorry, I'm rambling here, but it's uh, it's just kind of like you know, it's a whole new year it resets, just like really any other sport. Yeah. Hello? Whoops, sorry about that, man. My Skype muted. Yeah. Um, so it's like, in, in what I was saying is, from a business standpoint, I know that sometimes once I do one thing, I don't necessarily want to do it again because it just, from a marketing standpoint, you, you just go from, let's say for you, you go from an NCAA champion to a one or two or three or four-time champion, and you use it as a marketing ploy, but from an accomplishment standpoint, you've accomplished that, and there's such a drive to do it again. But when you say that you want to get better too, I, I'm so understanding of like, okay, I also want to do it again. And I also want to be a world and Olympic champion. Did winning the NCAA championship the first year you did it kind of check the box? And did that increase your desire to win it like a world and Olympic championship more? Or was that goal there from the get go and that hasn't changed? Um, I think it definitely, you know, kind of inspired me more yep. you know, to want to uh, be, you know, a world Olympic champion because, uh, you know, going into the tournament my freshman year, I honestly, I was like, I wasn't thinking like I'm winning this thing. Like I was like, I'm going to go, you know, let it rip and you know, right. do my best pretty much. And I ended up winning and it just kind of, you know, motivated me like, oh, I can, you know, if I can win this, you know. I can do this. I can be so much better. Right. And, you know, I can beat whoever, you know, if I just keep working. So, and then, yeah, things just kind of fall in place. And then, you know, speaking of like world and Olympic championships, um, you know, this is obviously the Olympic year coming up and we'll kind of go back to the feral. What did it mean to avenge that loss to Makai? Like, I mean, I was like three feet from the mat and I could kind of feel the intensity. Like you could see how bad you wanted it. Was that like a sigh of relief? Like, I know I should have beaten this guy and now I just did it. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it felt pretty good. It just like kind of helped like reassure my thoughts. Yeah. But, you know, it was, um, I think that was just a big match for me too, because, you know, he's a, you know, whatever uh age level you know world champ so yeah. obviously he's you know pretty still freestyle wrestler so i just because it helps me uh i guess gauge you know where i'm at yep freestyle wise because i haven't competed freestyle in years so it uh it just felt good to be back and you know wrestle some exciting matches man like i, I was excited i really like freestyle wrestling and you know that was a pretty good feeling and it, it looked at you definitely felt that and i and i was talking to to casey beforehand and you know i said it's always interesting these olympic years especially where you have guys and i was kind of trying to pick his brain a little bit on it to get his perspective and it's like you have guys where it's like okay you and Nolf, like you said, you guys have been wrestling since you were like eight years old or whatever age it was where your practice partners and this and that. And then you're, you're, I don't want to say you're in each other's way of your goals, but you both have the goal and the desire to be an Olympic champ and you guys have to beat each other for that. How do you balance that? Like, how do you approach that kind of match where it's like, it's a good friend of yours and you know, it's because I mean, I'll be honest, like, I see people not really as much in wrestling, but let's say maybe in more in like UFC and MMA where I'm like, I don't know how people can flip that switch. Like if I get mad or if I like fight someone or there's whatever, there's like a bit of anger, right? I can't just kind of put it on the line and say, ah, whatever happens, happens. How do you balance that? Like wrestling a good teammate, knowing like in the, like this is part of the process to become world and Olympic champion. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's definitely tough because, you know, I, I know, obviously, you know, I want Jason to be successful and I, you know, wish, you know, you know, everything goes his way. Right. And then it just so happens, like, you know, that's a guy I have to beat if I want to accomplish my goals. And, it, you know, it is really tough. And we wrestled at the Feral, you know, I kind of like, I was kind of like frozen for a minute because I was just like, it was just kind of like a weird pressure for me, I guess. And then, you know, as, you know, matches go on, you know, things kind of, uh, you know, flow and go how they would naturally. But it's just, you know, we both are aware of the situation and, you know, obviously it's not personal or anything like that. And, you know, he wants to be an Olympic champ. I want to be an Olympic champ. And we know that we're going to have to, you know, we'll probably wrestle each other again at some point in order to get there. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, but we still, you know, we still practice together all the time. We warmed up together for the foul too. Like it's not, it doesn't really change anything like that. You know, it's not like we're going to avoid each other right. or, or anything. You know, we're, we're still friends. We're still workout partners and, you know, we're just, uh, <clears throat> we know that wrestling each other is going to make us better at practice. So, yep. you know, why not? Might as well. And I, I know that like, I remember hearing, I remember, like, you guys went at, at the break in the middle of the match. I remember, like, you guys both were kind of confused, like, what corner to go to. And I remember two guys saying, <laughs> oh, they don't know what's going on. I'm like, dude, I'm like, they're wrestling their hearts out right now. And it's not that often you wrestle somebody with the same coach. <laughs> like, what are you talking yeah. about? And you obviously can't control everybody's narrative and everybody's, like, thoughts. But is, is there? does it add pressure to you? Obviously, when you wrestle a teammate, there's that level of like, I want them to be successful. Is it more of a pressure to try to not maintain your composure, but to say like, you know, I want to wrestle my absolute hardest, and I actually, I also really care about that person. Like, what is that like? It's um, you know, it's it's definitely a strange feeling. You just kind of gotta. I mean, I, I mean, maybe just you know, go on autopilot, really just kind of wrestle, really not think about it. If you just think too much into it, you're just going to kind of psych yourself out. Especially, you know, with someone like that, that's like, you know, your friend that you've been, you know, practicing with forever. But, you know, you guys know each other's, you know, moves all the time. And he, um, so he beat me 6-0. And that's like enough points that we score on each other like in a week. <laughs> so that's why I was like, I was like, dang, like I gave up a lot of points that match. Like I, you know, I was kind of mad about that, but you know, he wrestled good. And then what's the and, perspective after that? Like, so now you, you know, if you, I'm obviously a Vincenzo fan and I'm a Penn state fan. So I'm assuming you're going to win NCAAs. Have you given much thought to like the route to the Olympic trials or are you just kind of having that mentality of like, this is the process and I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm really just, you know, enjoying it right now. I, I mean, obviously I know that national champ gets a, a qualifying spot for the trials, which is, you know, great. And, you know, at the end of the day, my goal is to be, you know, 2020 national champ. So, you know, if I do accomplish that goal, then I'll accomplish another goal of uh, qualifying for the trials. But really, you know, just got to take it one step at a time. And just, you know, day to day, just, you know, gearing up for, you know, whoever we have next, Illinois. For sure. And, okay. and speaking of, you know, taking things one day at a time, I'm curious too, like, you're getting ready to graduate here soon. And then it's kind of a different world, right? You get to focus on freestyle yeah. full time. You get to stop worrying about classes. What are you looking forward to the most about graduating and transitioning into that next chapter of your life? Um, not going to class at eight and nine in the morning. That's definitely number one. I should have <laughs> left I, that out as the obvious answer. <laughs> uh, listen, I would have class at like nine every day, and I have to go and work out at seven o'clock every day, and it was just miserable. Yeah, like, I, can't, I just. I can't imagine what that's like because I never went to college. So I have a lot of empathy for, for someone who, you know, I, every time I go to Penn State, like I, I was, Cal became a client of mine when, when he was still at Iowa State. And when he moved to Penn State, it's, it's only a three hour drive for me. So that's kind of when our friendship 
kind of rose to the next level. And I remember going down to Penn State and helping him house hunt. And I kind of became a Penn State guy then. Like he he welcomed me and, and took me in and, and kind of made me a Penn State guy. And I remember like every time I come there, there's an ounce of regret that I didn't go to college because the atmosphere of college is there's nothing like it, especially Penn State. Like it's it's the best oh, school yeah, in the country. Nice. There's nothing like it. But I also like I just kind of see you guys and I, I see you guys on the highs. I see you running out in rec hall. I see you putting on the Penn State singlet, having, you know, the Penn State apparel and everything that means. Like, what has that meant to you to be able to be a part of a program that especially since you've been there, has been the most dominant college program in the country. What has it meant to, to be a part of that? It's, um, you know, it's amazing. I actually do like just kind of like think about that sometimes, just, you know, try to not take it for granted just because we've been in, involved with such an amazing program, you know, the past however many years, you know, since Coach Kale and everyone got here. And, you know, I have, you know, I have four national championship rings right now, and if we win this year, you know, I'll have a fifth one, which will, that's that's pretty cool, you know, for me to be on a team for five years, and if we win a national title, you know, every dude, you year don't need five, five rings. If you want to send me one for my office, like I'd really appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> no, so my plan is to get one for every finger. So okay. if we win this year, I'm getting fitted for my thumb. <laughs> that's gonna be pretty sweet. I can wear those I love around. That. Look like that. Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's been the plan from the get go. Like as soon as we, uh, got our first one, I was like, all right, like I'm going pinky next year <laughs> and middle finger and pointer finger and thumb. And so, and, you know, I think, I think we can do it. Yeah. I, listen again, I'm a Penn state guy. So I, I sometimes take a lot of crap because, you know, I do play the Penn state biased, but that's all right. But so, you know, obviously yeah, being, being, being a part of that is so special. What are you, what do you think you're going to miss the most about not being a part of that? Um, I feel like part of me will always have some Penn state in me, if that makes sense. Totally. Like I just like, I'll always, I'll always be a Penn state guy. You know, if I'm, you know, still here training in LWC, I'm still going to be a Penn State guy. And, you know, it's just, I'm like, you know, I'll be back here all the time whenever, you know, the day comes that I leave. But, you know, I'm, I will miss just like, you know, the school spirit is crazy. Like no one loves Penn State, like Penn State loves Penn State. Right. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Just like, you know, I, like you could be anywhere, like, Anywhere in the country, you see someone wearing Penn State stuff. You yell, "We are!" They're going to reply, "Penn State." Like it's, <laughs> right? It's, it, it's insane. It's it's kind of a uh, it's, it's like it a cult, a dude. Time, but, yeah, I know it is it's a cult that I'm proud to be a part of. <laughs> for for sure, man. Like like I said, like Cal made me a, like feel like I was a part of the team. Like the first time I ever came to a practice, he introduced me t to everybody. And he's like, guys, you know, this is Justin Bash. He helps me with my website and he's a marketing guy, all this. And like from then, I'm just like, okay, I never went to college. So I'm going to start supporting these guys. And I just got <laughs> like, I like them. Right. I'm just like, all right, I, I, I'm one of them. And I felt like an honorary member of the team because of how he kind of made me feel so welcome. And it's like, I see people with Penn State and I'm like, yeah, man. And there's such a pride. And I didn't even go to the school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. all right, I, I like this school. And, you know, so switching gears a little bit, like getting ready to leave Penn State, one of the positives is you do get to start monetizing yourself and you do get to start mm -hmm. building and capitalizing off the Vincenzo Joseph brand. How much thought have you given to getting ready for that and, and being able to start kind of not having limitations on what you do from a business standpoint? Um, I, I thought about it just a little bit, you know, um, you know, like I said, I, uh, I don't really think too much into that because I'm just right now, I'm just really focused on, you know, the rest of this season. Yep. And I figure once it's over, then I'll get to that. But right now, you know, I still have, you know, a job to do. I still have some business to take care of. So I'm more so focused just on, you know, wrestling, you know, finishing college, getting my degree, and I'll move on to that. What's your degree in? Um, communications. 
Okay. So so you're not yeah. the Penn State norm, which is what is it? Kinesiology? I don't know how to say it. Like Oh uh, yeah, this... we, we we tried that at one point. It wasn't it wasn't in the cards for me. <laughs> We tried so, it. Do you think we had to you'd, switch out? <laughs> do you think you'd ever actually do something with communications, or do you think at this point you've just committed yourself so much to wrestling, like wrestling is what you're going to do the rest of your life? Um, you know, I potentially could. I mean, I never know. I never know what really lies ahead. But right now, obviously, I'm thinking wrestling, just because you know that's where my passion is. That's what I love doing. That's what I'm best at. For sure. So, might, might as well stick with that for as long as I can. For sure, man. So before I let you go here, tell me tell me what you're most excited about coming up next. Like you have so much going on. I think your next meets against Illinois. You know, you have the NCAA championships three months away. You have the Olympic trials in four months. Um, Olympic games of the summer. 2020 is a wild year. It's always fun because every every NCAA year that has the Olympics a few months later is always intriguing, especially, I think, when seniors come into play and you kind of make that transition from NCAA champ and right into the, to the senior level and Olympics and all that. Like, What are you most excited for next? I'm extremely excited just to run out and wreck all for our next match. I feel like I haven't wrestled a match in like a month right now. And I'm just kind of <laughs> eager to get back out there. No, seriously. Like I just, no, I, I get love that. home matches at Rec. And every, like, you know, we wrestled there twice this year. Yep. And both times I'm like, man, like I'm almost done. Like this is going to be really sad whenever I'm done wrestling here. And, you know, I'm just trying to really you know, cherish those moments and not take them for granted. Yeah, there's something special about it. And I think you, you kind of saw that with, you know, I think one of the first times I've seen a Penn State graduate come back to Rec Hall was when Taylor came back for Final X. Uh, that was awesome. And that, that was awesome. That level of excitement, like I can't remember if it was Cal or Casey or someone's like, David grabbed the mic and he thought he was like the macho man. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, do, do, yeah, that was awesome. The, the level of excitement to come back to Rec Hall, like you see the passion and you see like what a, not just what an advantage is to compete there, but you see the genuine excitement and the level of support to compete there or the level of support that you have when you compete there. And you've seen that throughout your career. Like I'm assuming too, that's one of the things you're going to miss most as well, like competing and running out in rec hall. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like, there's really nothing like it. Yeah. I haven't run out at rec hall, but maybe someday I'll get to <laughs> in an honorary position. You should try, run you out. Should try it sometime. Yeah. Sometime I want to we run can, out. Uh, we've got to be a but and you know, <laughs> figure it out. We'll get some we'll get some people in there, play the music real loud. I'm just gonna run out and wrestle yeah. the mascot at break one time. <laughs> I'm sure Cal will make yeah, it happen. That that'll work too. Yeah, we can talk to him. He'll be on board for sure. <laughs> I'm down. All right, man. Well listen, I'm gonna let you go. I'm super, super grateful you took the time to stop by the show and I'm pumped for you to get back on the mat and I look forward to seeing that return. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Of course, man. And guys, thank you so much for listening. That is it for today's show. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe. As I started this podcast off by saying there have been 27 great guests and there are at least 27 great guests more still to come. So be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. And we will be back with another episode shortly. See ya! And the beat goes on.